and be glad in it. Come on and let's just lift up the name of the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Let's give God glory. At this time, we are going to, we want to first say welcome to worship on the lawn. We pray that something is said or done today that will bring blessing to your life and your walk with Christ. So at this time, we are going to have our opening scripture uh, by Evangelist Smith, and then I will do the morning prayer. The word of the Lord is coming from Psalms 27, and it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. Father, we come before you right now, Lord God, with a heart full of thanks. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come out to worship one more time. We thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for being able to get up and get out of our beds on today. God, we, we also thank you for allowing us to even just move about and to make it out here one more time. Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for every person that is gathered here on today. Father, we lift up those who are unable to be here. We ask you to touch, Lord, those who need a touch. Bless those who need a special blessing. Father, those who need healing, we speak healing to them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that are in the nursing homes, Lord God. Those who are behind prison bars, Lord God. Father, we pray for every person who is in a mental institute on today, Lord God. God, we know that you are able to heal all manner of sickness and disease. So we're calling on you right now, God, to heal, Lord God. God, heal the brokenness of your people, Lord God. Father, we pray for those who are in turmoil on today for different situations. Lord, let them know that you offer a peace, a peace that surpasses understanding. Father, help us on today to turn to you for every need that we have, Lord God. And Father, if there's anything that we said or done that's wrong, we ask you to forgive us of it, Lord God. Father, we just lift you up and we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. Father, we just thank you once more and again. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we come with our worship music for today, we want to just uh, make a few announcements. Um, I pull it up. There is a celebration that's taking place on Saturday. I mean Friday, excuse me, on Juneteenth. I gotta pull the, the and it's been asked that we announce that there is a Juneteenth Father's Day family cookout. And it is Saturday, June 20th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's at the High Rock Community Center in Blanche. So we were asked to make that announcement. We want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. We want you to continue to pray for those who are um, sick on today, those who are unable to make it. Um, continue to keep them lifted in prayer. So as we get ready to move on, we want to remind everyone that uh, Wednesday nights, Bible study is at 6.30 on Zoom and via conference call. Everyone is welcome to uh, participate in our Wednesday night Bible study. Actually, you are encouraged to participate in Bible study. It's more to learning about the Lord than just coming on Sunday morning. There's so much more we can get more in depth in. When you listen at Bible study or Sunday school, you get more information than you'll get on Sunday morning. Sunday morning, we do some preaching and teaching. But on Wednesday nights, we delve deeper into the word. We, we find a, a deeper meaning in things and, and understanding of what God is really trying to say to us. So I do encourage you to log on with us. This Wednesday night, we are talking about the lost, L-O-S-T. And there are people who are lost today. We, some of us have family members who are lost. And we need to learn about the lost and what it is that we need to do about those who are lost. 
So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and turn it over now, and we will have our worship, and we're going to, we'll come back with the message from Isaiah 43.
find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart cry, I'm desperately waiting to be I want to be where you are, I got to be where you are, I want to be where you are, I got to be where you are.
Are you grateful today? Are you grateful today? Are you grateful today? I know you're in your car, but you can still open up your mouth and you can shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God, I thank you! We feel like praise is just something that you can't do unless you're in the sanctuary. But I want you to know today that God is everywhere. He is everywhere. So whether we're in the sanctuary, on the porch, in the yard, at the house, we can still give God glory and praise and honor. So don't get it twisted. Don't think you gotta be, you know, uptight because you're outside. It doesn't matter about where you are. It's about who you are praising. Amen. We have got, I, I was looking at it, how God has taken us from what we are used to and shown us what is really important. Our location is not important. Where we are, it's not important. It's about what's here. What's in your heart? Are you here to worship the Lord? Are you here to give him glory? Amen. So that's what it's all about. So God has taken us from the things that we are comfortable in and showing us that we can praise him no matter where we are. We can, we can still have church. We are the church. So wherever we are, we should still be able to glorify God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get into the word for today. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through seven. We pray that something is said during this message on today that will help someone. Isaiah 43, one through seven, and I'm gonna be reading the New Living Translation of this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through fire, the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel your savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for you, for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. So do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. I will say to the north and south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for those that are gathered here to hear your word on today. And God, I ask you right now to allow me to speak forth this word with clarity, Lord God, so that someone will understand what you are saying to us. Father, we pray that you will unstop the deaf ears so that your people will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We ask you to prepare the hearts to receive from your word on today. Father, we thank you, Lord, that somebody will, will have a change in their lives because of your word. Father, we thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want to talk for just a few moments on the subject of when God is with you. When God is with you. I, I want to pull that from the first part of verse 2 and then the first part of verse 5. He says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Then when you drop down to verse 5, he says, do not be afraid.
for I am with you. So I want to talk about when God is with you. There is a word from the Lord today for us, and it is from the prophet Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is full of prophecy that is filled with tears of suffering mixed with a joy that comes from healing. It speaks of judgment and a blessing. It speaks of punishment and restoration. This book of Isaiah helps us to understand that we can look beyond our present circumstances to see a brighter future. In the previous chapter before our text, the situation in which Israel finds herself is the result of the nation's refusal to obey God's law. See, a large part of the population of Judah dwelled as captives and exiles, and, and they were faced with devastation, distress, and death. The temple had been destroyed, and Jerusalem was in ruins, and their liberty had been lost, and the people were in a desperate situation. They des they're described in chapter 42 as being blind and deaf, imprisoned in darkness, and God's patience had worn out with them, and he was now on the warpath. The Bible says the Lord goes forth like a soldier, like a warrior. He stirs up his fury. He cries out. He shouts aloud. He shows himself mighty against his foes. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant and I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbage. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. That was in Isaiah 42 verses 13 through 15. And reading that we see that there, it seems like there is no hope for the people and, and disaster has fallen on them. But however, our text in chapter 43, it brings a change of tone. See, the message turns from one of endangerment at the end of chapter 42, to, uh, they were in danger by the fire of God's wrath. It turns to a promise and an assurance of salvation or deliverance from the flames. See, Israel had stepped over boundaries that were set for them on many occasions. They were often disobedient unto the Lord. And, and, and their disobedience brought about trouble into their lives. And their refusal to follow God's law caused them to suffer as a nation. And what we see from this is that God is punishing them, but that, he, but that doesn't mean that he has abandoned them. In fact, he is like a loving father who punishes his child to bring the child into obedience. As our text opens, we see these two words, but now. And we know that the word but is a conjunction that connects two clauses or statements together. However, the word but negates or canceled out whatever came before that. In Isaiah 42 verses 18 through 25, Israel, we were hearing of Israel's failure to listen and obey and how God was punishing them as a reward uh, he poured out his wrath. But when we turn to chapter 43, it says, but now. I know that there are some here who understand what it means when you see a uh, but now. You've had your but now experience in life. I want you to know today that in spite of what has happened or what took place before this point, God in his grace and his mercy, he chose to forgive and restore. See, that is something that we as the body of Christ should shout about today because God has showered us with his grace and his mercy on many occasions when we have deserved a whipping or a chastisement. But God in his grace and his mercy, he had mercy on us. He didn't give us what we deserve. We have messed up before. We have been disobedient. We've been rebellious. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us together with Christ. So by grace, you are saved. So, so Israel needed to hear God's words of restoration that are found in chapter 43 because they had been through some tough times. 
And, and we need to hear these very same words today because many are going through some tough times. We need to know that even through the storms, God, even though the storms have come, even when trials and tests show up, even though the enemy pokes up his head, God still has a purpose and a plan for his people. It's important for us to remember today that our text is written from the perspective of an exile. See, uh, the prophet was telling them, reminding them that they may be captives and exiles, but they still have the promises of God. They may have troubles, but God speaks through the prophet to let them know, don't fear, because I have redeemed you. I called you by my name. You are mine. And when you go through the waters, I'm going to be with you. And through the rivers, they won't overwhelm you. And though you walk through fire, you won't be burned. So I want you to know today and understand that, that the fire and water are often used in Scripture to signify disaster, destruction, and devastation, and danger. That's what fire usually stands for. And, and, and water, it, it, it overwhelms you. It overruns you. It overpowers. And fire consumes, destroys, and demolishes. But God has given us a promise. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, trouble will come, but you won't sink. You won't drown because I'm with you. When you walk through the fire of oppression, when persecution comes, it won't devour you because I am with you. See, if you take a moment to look at your life, you will see the numerous times that God has shown up for you even when you did not deserve it. See, God continues to meet our needs despite of our shortcomings and failures. He continues to provide for us. So I want to encourage you today because the same God who made a way for Israel to escape, escape the grips of Pharaoh is the same God will deliver you today. The same God who led Israel to cross the Jordan River, he will make a way for us even today. See, the same God in the fiery furnace with the Hebrew boys is the same God that's keeping us from being consumed today. Our God has not changed. What he did for Israel, he can be counted on to do for us today. So there's, this is not an area, uh, there's not an area of your life in which God will not work to fulfill his promises. And as you face your storms, walk through the valleys and endure the dark nights, I want you to remember that the same God that he was back then is the same God that he is today. And he won't fail you. God will never fail you. He'll meet your need. God is able to supply our needs. And not only is he able, he is willing. God is faithful to his word. And he is always near. So whatever you need, God's standing there ready and willing and able to take care of the situation. As we look back at our text, God reminds them of who they are. He said this, but now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, they needed to be reminded of where they come from. He created them out of nothing and he chose Abraham to be their father and then 400 years later he uh, freed them from Egypt and formed a nation with him as their God so God let them know that he had redeemed them he did that by rescuing them and releasing them he brought them out of slavery to be his people in his own land God said I've called you by name. You are mine. You're precious in my sight and honored and I love you. He created them and they belong to him and he goes on to let them know that he will be with them. So I want you to know he said when you go through the water and great trouble, I'm going to be with you. When you go through difficulties, you won't drown. They won't overtake you. When you're walking you won't be burned up and the flames won't consume you no matter what we will face today God is right there so when you're going through remember the Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble he knows them that trust in him yes there will be suffering sometimes but God will limit it to what you 
make sure we put our trust in him and allow him to do what he does in our lives and use us for his glory thank you Jesus we're going to take a moment now to give an opportunity if there's someone in the car who does not has not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life we have to give an opportunity for you to do so. Again, this is, we are doing things in an unconventional way, but I want you to know that God has a way. And when we do what we do for him, he's going to be glorified, so he's going to let it come to be. So if you're in your car on today and something was said that prompts you to want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want you to know today that all you have to do and I know some of you might get tired of hearing it, but this is what the word says. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So that's all it takes today is confession. Lord, I am a sinner. But your word says that all I have to do is Confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. So I confess Jesus today, Lord God. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And so I thank you now, Lord God, for coming into my life, coming into my heart and, and, and making me what you would have me to be. Thank you, Lord, for saving me by your grace. And if you said that on today, you have now accepted Jesus. And before we close out, I want to give another opportunity. If you are in your cars or standing out and you're in need of prayer for something today, I ask you to lift your hands. If you are in need of prayer on today, we ask you to lift your hands. Father, we come before you right now, Lord God. We're crying out and praying for those who are standing in need of something on today. God, you know what it is that each one is in need of. You know what it is that they're going through. You know what, what kind of ailments or issues that are going on in their lives. And we're asking you right now, God, if you will step in, Lord God, and move in their lives. Show yourself strong, Lord God. Father, help us to continue to lean on, to lean and depend on you and to trust you. Lord God, as we go through our daily dealings and, 
And whatever it is that we have to encounter, help us, Lord God, to call on you, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to be an example to other people. Help us, oh God, to walk the way that you would have us to walk. Help us, Lord God. Father, we pray for those that are sick on today. We pray, Lord God, for healing for them. We know that your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So we speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those who are in need of employment on today. We're asking you, Lord God, to supply the need for them, Lord God. Open a door for them, Father. Give them direction on where to go and who to talk to, Lord God. And give them favor with people so that they may receive a, a, a employment on today. Father, we pray for those, Lord God, who are caregivers, who are going through some things right now. God, we ask you to strengthen them, Lord. They're often forgotten about, but we ask you, God, to, to give them strength, Lord God, and, and, and touch their bodies, Lord God. Father, we just want to lift you up, and we want to praise you and give you glory, Father. We're asking you, Lord God, to, to meet the needs of your people like we know that you will, Father. We know, God, if we ask it according to your will, you said you hear us. So we thank you right now for hearing our prayers, Lord God, and for answering them. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Come on and let's give God glory. Thank you, Lord. All right, we're going to get ready to go home. And uh, we pray that something was said or done today to bless you. We also pray that you will continue to lift one another up. You don't have to know every name, but just pray for, you know, pray for everyone. There are things that are happening. Some, some changes are being made, but we still need to keep praying. Keep praying. Pray for peace. Pray for peace throughout the world. Father, we just thank you that as each person leaves this place on today, Lord God, that you will be with them. We ask you to let your angels encamp round about them and keep them safe. Let them go before them, come behind them, and on every side of them. Father, we pray that when they arrive at their next destination, they will find everything well. And we pray that you'll keep us throughout this week, Lord, and let us come back together again to lift up your holy name on next week. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, hold on, hold on. I need you to feel this, all right? How many know?